comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had wreathed Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palms along his way. Let these branches be a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in a way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And let us pray together Psalm 118. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will, I will enter, enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This, this is the day of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for your mercy and have become my salvation. The same stone which the world is rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord who has shined on us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And now I would invite all those at home to open their hymnal, if you have one, to hymn number 154, All Glory, Lord, and Honor.
be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us be attentive to the word of God. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll pray together Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of line. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. 
Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not to even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now the fe at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So, after they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they all said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted at all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that was not the beginning. He took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His, his blood, blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King of the, the Jews. Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits who were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left, those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy, destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come, come down, down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, 
He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man was calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. In the name of the one who taught us to live, to die, and to rise again. Amen. Today we commemorate Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, a day when we wave palms to remember how the Jews welcomed Jesus in triumph into Jerusalem. Recently, our bishop explained the significance of palms in ancient cultures. It was customary to wave palms to welcome a visiting dignitary or to honor royalty in procession. What the people did to welcome Jesus wasn't a unique thing, but an appropriate gesture to welcome Jesus whom they proclaimed King of the Jews. They place palms and clothes on the roads as a sign of respect as they would a royal visitor. I also learned in cultures like in Haiti, when it rains, people use palms to create sidewalks over streets where puddles form so folks can cross from side to side. What's unique this Sunday is we switch quickly from the joy of the procession and the headiness of the moment with Jesus to the story of his betrayal, passion, and death. For some of my clergy colleagues, they struggle with this dichotomy and sometimes don't do both Gospels on this Sunday, but save the passion for Good Friday. In this unique time that we find ourselves as a nation and a world, 
I think reflecting on the joy and tragedy of these stories is more appropriate than ever. We see the tension of this drama playing out every day in situations in life at this time, as well as in our normal lives. It was like the kid in my hometown in 1975 who just graduated high school. That evening there was a graduation party at which he drank too much and drove home. He never made it, wrapping himself around a tree on Lakeshore Drive, which has many turns and twists. This day of total joy was turned on its head with the unexpected outcome of his death. Or the premature baby born in Southern Maryland when Art was called to transport him back to Children's Hospital in Washington. While speaking to the child's parents, the child had a seizure and they could not stabilize him. Art had to go back to the parents to say their child was dead. The anticipation and the joy of this new birth was turned into these parents' worst nightmare in a flash. Or the 14-year-old in my former parish who was celebrating Thanksgiving with his friends and family. The boys went outside after dinner and he had a tragic skateboard accident that left him brain dead, having ultimately to be taken off life support. Being the only person in the room with the family at the time they took him off life support was the hardest day of my priesthood. Or just this week, two guys who went on a trip of a lifetime to the, through the Pacific Ocean on the Grand Pacific cruise ship were among those who left the ship in Oakland and were quarantined. Both died, one last Saturday on March 21st and the other on Monday the 23rd, a joyful trip of a lifetime ending in terrible tragedy. Palm and Passion Sunday hold before us this stark truth of life. Joy and gladness turn to tragedy and death. This one Sunday during the year, we are forced to look at the truth of things. Today not only considers the life and death of Jesus, but the truth of our own lives. Moments we, that have been filled with joy and promise turn instantly into pure horror. We are to consider the truth of our situation. We are to do all that we can to adhere to the guidelines set before us by the professional scientists and not be diverted into some fantastic thinking that this is nothing and will pass quickly. For the good of ourselves, our families and our communities, we are called to say stay, stay safe and practice what they are telling us to do. While this is a time of tragedy, it is also filled with hope and moments of beauty. At this time of isolation, we are being called to come together in new ways, to reflect and savor the most important parts and the people of our lives. The story of Palm Sunday and the Passion, joy turning to sorrow. Next week we celebrate turning around again into the miracle of new life. So we will see you all next Sunday. And as I end this reflection, I am reminded of a quote from British botanist and author of The Green Man, Catherine Basford, that I found appropriate. She wrote, it is when we are confronted with poignant reminders of mortality that we become most aware of the strangeness and wonder of our brief life on earth.
Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday holds great meaning for us. So may we this day listen to what God is saying to you and to me. Amen. And now I invite you into a moment of prayer as we pray the prayers of the people that have been adapted from the prayer for the pandemic. And let us pray. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we who have no or few risk factors remember those most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we who have luxury of working from home Remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent payments. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools are closed Remember those who do not have these options. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we who have had to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we who are lo losing our marginal money in the tumult of our economics remember those who have no margins at all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we who settled in for a quarantine at home remember the homeless and those who have no home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those on the front lines in our health care system, for our first responders and those who continue to protect us in the police forces and the fire departments, for our elected leaders at the national, state, and local level, for the leaders of our faith communities. May God grant safety, wisdom, and courage to proclaim Christ's message of love in the midst of these days. Lord, in your mercy. And now I invite you to hold in your heart at home those whom you know who are ill, who have asked for prayers, those isolated at home in a way that needs support or is feeling keenly the ramifications of isolation for anyone in your world who needs prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. and let us pray. As fear grips our country and world, let us choose love, 
during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God and to our neighbors. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, also with you. and let us share a sign of peace to one another. Peace to all of you at home. And I simply want to mention that um, we will continue to do services here in the church until otherwise we are unable to continue these services in church. But for the moment, we are safely doing it as best we can. We will, on Easter Sunday, have our service on the YouTube channel posted most likely sometime on Good Friday. So I invite you to again after this week to continue to observe Holy Week. Make it a Holy Week for you. There's many, many resources for Holy Week. I will try and post some uh, from the diocese and others on our website, have Rob do that for us. But I invite you to observe a Holy Week also, you should know that there will be a Good Friday service also on our website that will be uploaded Friday morning so you can share in an abbreviated Good Friday services of the Stations of the Cross and Veneration of the Cross here that we are doing at St. Peter's Church. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. And I invite you to turn to hymnal 168, 368? 168 for O Sacred Head Sore Wounded, the first three verses.
prayer continues with Eucharistic day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God our Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercies sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
taste our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We at this time, those of you who are at home, will not aren't able to receive the elements of the communion physically in person. And as an act of solidarity with you, those handful of us here in church leading the service will also join you in fasting from the physical presence of our Lord and Savior and invite you at this time to take Christ into your hearts as our organist Joshua and his mother play a beautiful in paradisum to reflect upon this day and Christ's place in your heart.
in place of our post normal post-communion prayer, those handful of us gathered here this morning will pray together a post-communion prayer for spiritual communion. And let us pray. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot receive you sacramentally in the physical elements of the bread and wine, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And we depart now in silence as we also strip the altar in preparation for Holy Week. 